All right, guys, this is my nephew, Riley. He's 15. He thinks he's 25 years old. He thinks he knows everything. Just joking, buddy. But uh, this guy's been uh, into hunting for a while. He shot his first bear when he was nine. Check out this picture. But this is the first year we've talked about actually working towards getting his own bow. And so my dad hired him to work around the place. I pitched in some loot. His mom did as well. And he has earned a bow and we ordered it we got it all set up and today is the day where he actually gets to see that come here i want to show you here you are sir so he's a southpaw yeah left eye dominant and uh it's like it's a Matthews Halon. Halon 6. Halon 6. So that's a pretty good looking rig. The thing I like about this is that you're going to have the ability to kind of grow with this bow as you get taller or whatever. We won't pull it back quite yet, but we've, what we did was we got you just your basic quiver put on there. Basic fuse quiver sight. Trophy taker rest, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yep, trophy taker rest. This is going to be your release and I have lots of releases, pal. So, um, and one of the things is gonna, you're gonna get a little bit of a lesson from Josh, so you don't teach yourself any bad habits. First rig. And that's what it's all about, guys, is like trying to get more people involved in hunting. And it's not just about us and our, our hunts. We wanna get our whole family involved and get their kids as kids. And I wanna get my kids to hunt. I can't make them, I can just show them. And hopefully if they show interest, he has always shown interest. And that's, uh, I, have a, I have several nephews, but he's the only one that's actually really wanted to dive into this stuff. So congratulations, man. And uh, we'll get you a lesson with Josh and uh, get you going from there. This module is not your right drawing, so we're gonna cut them off and we're gonna insert them. Because they're gonna be a little longer than yours. Good boy bow, bud. It's a real deal, man. Cool. Yeah, this was a new bow that was $1,100 before you put parts on originally. So. Oh, wow. Just happen to still have one laying around. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Boop. Okay, knuckle there. Keep her there. Tip of your nose over here. All right, now, do I need to raise or lower that peep to see those pins? I'm looking right at the pins. Okay, go ahead and set the bow forward. Try to keep your front hand relaxed. Don't grip the crap out of it when you do it. Just lower it down. There you go. Good job. Pull the trigger. All right, we'll tie the peep in place. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Well, um, I was working in there like sweeping floors and stuff when I was like five. Um, I was officially a, a archery technician at like 11. Um, I only worked on Saturdays because I had school and it was like half hour away from, I got something from uh, my work, from where I uh, lived. And I couldn't drive obviously because I was too young to drive. So um, I worked Saturdays and during the summer I worked a lot you know, when my, uh, when my dad was there and when I didn't have school and that didn't matter. That's my wax. <sighs> but, um, I mean, once I, uh, once I could drive, I worked pretty much full time. It was a family business. So there's like no rules. So you can basically make a kid work as much as you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I worked full time through high school and in the summers I probably worked 60 to 70 hours a week and I worked in the archery department and spent pretty much most of my childhood there. And then when I uh, graduated high school, I rented an apartment six blocks from the archery shop, uh, from the, the sporting goods store that had the archery department in it. And I had keys to the building and whatnot. So I spent countless nights after we were closed till 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, screwing around with bows and shooting stuff. Cause when nobody was in there, you could shoot like 40 yards inside. Um, and I'd uh, turn music on in the PA and have all the lights off other than where I was working and just constantly playing with bows. And I spent, when most people were out uh, partying and tearing up the town, I was playing with bows in, in, a, in a building at night. You know, I wasn't uh, having a typical life. I, uh, I didn't uh, aggressively date a lot. I just wanted to work on bows and play with archery stuff. And I was just really into it. Um, and maybe I was a nerd or maybe I was uh, socially awkward or something. I don't know. I didn't really feel that way, but maybe I was. I don't know. Um, clearly not now. Uh, it's easy for me to communicate and talk to people and what have you. But I just loved archery stuff and wanted to understand how it worked because I have a mechanical mind. And if I don't understand something mechanically, I want to test it and figure out why. 
Um, and I will always have that. I'll have that till I die. When something goes wrong with anything I do, I want to understand how it works. I don't just want to pay somebody to fix it. So that's just my mind. So a lot of my theories and whatnot are usually backed up by testing and proof and evidence uh, rather than what somebody else did or what somebody else thinks. That's just my mind. That's how I work. So don't make it, don't make it more complicated than it is. Um, people tend to complicate things a lot uh, when they're doing it. They're focused on all the wrong things. Um, just try to look at the target all the time and try not to think so much beyond that. Um, focus on what you want to hit and keep your thoughts on what you want to hit and try not to think about a hundred other things while you're doing that. The more you can keep your focus downrange, the calmer your mind will be. Day one, have it be more important in your mind to make a good shot and not care about where you hit. If you fixate on where you hit, you will move a lot more because you're trying to control it. You can't, you have to let it happen. And the more you let it happen, the less you try to control the situation, the less it moves. Just making a good clean shot, pay attention to how it feels when it goes off and trying to duplicate that feeling, not trying to hit that middle of the target. The more you focus on trying to hit the middle of the target, as opposed to making a good shot, the more you're gonna move, the more you're gonna shake, the more you're gonna flinch, the more you're gonna react. So just making a good shot needs to be the most important thing in your mind period and once you embrace that and that is true not just something i want it's something i am and something i do the thing will stop moving it's moving because you're making it move because you're trying to hit the middle of the target because that's what's important to you if making a good shot's important to you it just kind of stops moving okay your foot stance is pretty good your hand you need to sit like this. You need to push towards me. Like straighten your arm out a little bit and try to push, but drop your shoulder down. Don't hold it up. Okay. So keep your wrist flat. Relax your wrist. There you go. So we're trying to push through your whole hand. Mm -hmm. Right? So just try to hold my weight up with your arm like that. There you go. That's good. Keep your hand like this. We do this number and you start torquing really bad and then you get smacky here and we want to avoid that. So I'm going to bring this around to you. Like that. All right, cool. Bring your release up to the loop and put it on it and push it closed. Put your finger behind the trigger. Don't pull it back yet. Okay. Go ahead and pull it back. Keep going until it stops. You're almost there, almost there, almost there. Keep going. Oh yeah. We're going to have to back that down one more turn for you. Okay. So open your hand up a little bit. There you go. Keep it back. Keep it back. There you go. All right, now look through your peep here, bud. Over there, there you go. Push your arm forward, you're leaning really hard. Like, kind of lean forward a little bit more. All right, look through your peep, put that green pin on that yellow cube. See the yellow cube? Mm -hmm. Go ahead whenever you're ready, squeeze it off. Nice, that knuckle on your jawbone. There you go, look through your peep. There you go, keep it back. There you go. Find your target, top green pin, middle of the target. Whenever you're comfortable, squeeze it off. Hey, that's the middle. Does that feel a little easier? Mm -hmm. Good. Think it's all right, or do we need to go down a little more? I think that's all right. Okay, it'll get really easy as you start shooting. Uh, most people will progress up in weight three to five pounds within the first like two weeks because they're just not used to how a bull and a bow back feels. Mm -hmm. You want to touch your jaw with that, so we'll lean your head back. Well, there you go. Yeah, he's his shoulders up, his body's twisted. He's just struggling to get used to how it feels. Um, so I would rather see him shoot 50 to 100 arrows before we got too fixated on any of it, because it's just getting the muscle mass usage. Um, I'd have him shoot at like 10 yards for a week and shoot every day, and it'll get a lot easier. And then once it gets a lot easier, we can try to manipulate. Manipulate your body position a little bit more because you are leaning quite a bit, but it's, mm -hmm. it's hard not to at first when you haven't shot okay. Yeah, yeah you group about that big okay. Good job, man. We're wrapping it up. 
So what I would work on for the first week of this is shoot your bow every day as much as you can until you really start to get tired. And now if 10 arrows is all you can do, then 10 arrows is all you can do. Hopefully you work yourself up to where you're doing about 30 or yeah. 40. It will get a lot easier after a couple of days. It's, it's a movement that you haven't done and your muscles aren't used to. So what feels hard right now will get super easy. And then in about a week when it starts to get easier for you, we can work on a little more fundamental stuff, how your shoulders should, should sit, how your hand should sit. Uh, but just make sure you're keeping that elbow out while you're okay. this way. So make sure you've got your grip like I showed you and your actually it is this way. Sorry, I'm right handed. So don't let your elbow come in like that. That's how you're going to hit your arm. Keep your elbow out and straight forward and always push your bow hand at the target. The strength will come and it will come quite quick. But you're doing really good for the first five shots, man. It's really incredible. Yeah, thank good you work. very much. You're welcome. That's what we're here for, man. Not going to lie. <laughs>